Hello everybody, my name's Merlin and I'm an Ableton certified trainer and musician based in Denmark. So I'm a pretty recent addition to the Warp Academy family and in my first video I kick things off by having a look at Simpler. We, went, we use classic mode to take a sample of my own voice and turn it into a funky lead synth in the context of a track. So if you missed that video you can click on the link at the bottom of the screen and go and check that out now. But for today we're going to soldier on in part two and have a look at one shot mode. So in addition to giving you a walk through all the features, I'm also going to show you a quick workflow you can use to take some existing ideas and turn it into a B section in your own tracks. So without further ado, let's have a look. So we're going to continue with the track we were working on in my last video, where we use Simpler's classic mode to make a vocally lead synth. So I wanted to add a B section and although my first thought might be to go browsing through my sample library and find a new sound, I really like to repurpose the sounds I already have in my arrangements and jam them out into new patterns or ideas. So Simpler makes this really easy to do with one shot mode. Let's have a quick listen to what I've done and then I'll show you how I made it. <laughs> Okay, so like before, everything you just heard is available as a free download in the form of a project file. So you can grab that now and recreate the techniques I'm showing you or add some of the sounds to your libraries. After resampling a few notes from the vocal lead we made in the last video, I've built up a rack of 16 different new versions of the sound to jam out new phrases with. <laughs> Let's start building a rack like this from scratch. I'm going to go ahead and resample that synth. I've set up a few channels here for the purpose. Let's drag this new sample onto an empty MIDI channel, which will automatically open a new instance of Simpler. Now, one shot mode is geared towards triggering samples. It's super useful when working with percussive elements, jamming out new ideas, and also when playing live. I'm going to set the start point and end point and turn off warping for now. By default, one shot mode will play the sample all the way through the selected area every time a MIDI note is pressed. A new note will restart playback. You can toggle this to gate mode, where a note off message will stop the sample immediately. We'll leave this on trigger mode for now. So here on the bottom right, we can find the fade in and fade out controls, which you can see handily represented in the sample viewer. We also have transpose, velocity amount, and device volume. The control section is the same as in classic mode. Now that I have the sound tamed, I'm going to go ahead and add a drum rack to a new MIDI track and drag my simpler sound onto the first cell. I'm going to start off by assigning the transpose knob to macro 1 of our drum rack. You'll see why in a minute. I'm going to make sure that the range is between minus 12 and plus 12. Next, I'm going to copy this sound into the next cell by holding down Option if you're on a Mac, or Control if you're in Windows, and dragging and letting go. Now let's make this a really short plucking kind of sound, selecting a smaller play area and turning the fade out up. This time I'm going to turn up Fade In, select just the tail and add some gain. Great, here's a cool one, let's make another copy, make sure it's in beats mode, stretch it out a bit and set preserves to sixteenths, mode to gate and envelope to pretty low. So as you can see, this is quite the rabbit hole, hours of fun to be had exploring here. You can of course go further and add effects and processing to the individual cells of your drum rack. So let's fast forward then and go back to the rack that I made before. 
Here's another little trick you can do. Adding all the sounds to the same choke group will make sure that only one cell is ever playing. This can be a great way to control your tails if you have some longer sounds that clash with others. So as you can see, I've automated our transpose macro knob across the timeline to keep the samples in key with our track. OK, so let's turn back on that little jam I had earlier and listen to the result in context one last time. Sweet, so that was a really quick tool that you can use to take existing melodic ideas and turn them into a new part of your arrangement. So I hope you'll find that useful. In my next video, we're going to soldier on to the third part of Simpler, which is the slicing mode. But for now, I've been Merlin Silver, and this is Warp Academy. Thanks for watching.